Welcome to Book Clips, a weekly podcast featuring author readings, produced by the Lesbian Review, connecting lovers of lesbian with lesbian authors. You can find more information on this book in the show notes. And don't forget to help others find this podcast by rating and subscribing on iTunes, Podbean and Stitcher. Chef Special by Susan X. Marr Read by Anne Etter An excerpt from Chapter 2 At noon, Blake sauntered in via the loading dock doors, pausing to move around the kitchen, shaking hands, while adding a few words to those she seemed to know well. Emily had finished butchering her fish and was just marking time until she knew what the specials would be for the day. Surreptitiously, she watched Blake work the room. She had such an elegant way of moving, her posture ramrod straight, with a crisp sea-green summery blouse making her look like she'd just come from a nice walk in the park. Her hair shone black as beluga caviar, with gentle waves framing her lovely face. Then Blake turned abruptly and clapped Emily on the shoulder, startling her. Glad to have you on board, Emily. After shaking her hand, she continued to grant, leaving Emily with what she knew was a silly grin on her face. It was like having the queen pick you out of the crowd for a special greeting, and she didn't have the self-control to act like it hadn't given her a boost. Now finished shaking in, Blake walked over to the doors that led to the dining room, fiddled with a sound system hidden behind a stainless cover, then propped the doors open, allowing a blast of music to penetrate the room. The Smiths? Funny choice. But Emily could see her liking the British alt-rock scene. It somehow fit. On the way to her office, she sang along quietly, the lyrics just brushing Emily's ear. A jumped-up pantry boy who never knew his place. A second after Blake detoured into the staff bathroom, she stormed right back out, good mood obliterated. Standing in the middle of the kitchen, she called out in full voice, Meeting! Everyone stopped. Not a sound for two or three seconds. Then five people scurried out of the prep kitchen, and two dishwashers flew from their separate nook, their hands dripping water onto the floor. I must not have made myself clear, she said, her tone now relatively quiet, modulated. Toilet seats are to be returned to the horizontal position. She held her hand out in front of herself, showing what she meant by horizontal. Urine must be directed inside the bowl not on the rim. I understand everyone doesn't have the skill or the ability to hit the ball every time. But every one of you can take a paper towel and clean up after yourself. Her heated gaze scanned the crowd. I'm locking the bathroom, she declared. A startled gasp sounded from behind Emily. If you want to use it, ask me for the key. After you've finished, it had better be as clean as it was at the beginning of the day. I'll be checking. As will Emily, our new Sue, and Grant. She glared at each face in turn. Got that? We, oui, chef, came the nearly unanimous reply. Only Emily's yes stuck out, making it clear she wasn't a member of the team yet. Her expression softened. Then Blake met Emily's eyes and said, I'm sorry to give her such an unpleasant welcome, but you all know how I feel about the bathroom. She cleared her throat, <clears throat> and a smile finally returned to her face. Emily Desjardins comes to us from Henri and Gramercy, where she was Sue. You might also have run into her at Defarge or Farmstand. Introduce yourselves to her when you get a chance. Then Blake strode toward her office, calling out, Sue! Emily and Grant scampered after her like ducklings after their mother. When they entered, she closed the door. I know they think I'm an asshole, but leaving the bathroom dirty means they aren't fastidious. Dirty people can't be trusted to make clean food. Both of you keep an eye on it. I'll put a closed-circuit camera in there if I have to. We, oui, chef, they said, with Emily adopting the nomenclature. She just hoped she wasn't the one charged with reviewing the P-cam footage. It was only so much you wanted to know about your fellow cooks, and their bathroom habits wasn't on the list. Okay. Blake sat down at her desk, then popped a piece of gum into her mouth as she turned to Emily. Are you ready to discuss today's specials? We, oui, chef, she said, 
taking the chair next to the door. Grant excused himself, leaving them alone. Blake must have already told him his input wasn't necessary. I was in such a damn good mood, Blake said, leaning back in her chair. Having you here is going to make things so much better. I was floating on air when I walked in, looking forward to being able to relax. I've been covering for three weeks now, and I'm wrecked. You have? Emily knew she looked stunned, but that's because she was. Chef Henri would have called an agency and had someone, anyone, in there the day after his Sue left. Who else can do it? If I thought Brady was ready to move up, I would have moved him. She tossed another piece of gum into her mouth, her jaw muscles popping from the rigor of her chewing. Have you met Brady? No, chef. Just Grant and Carlos so far. Brady's your poinçonnier. You'll like him. He's got the knack for cooking fish, and he never causes trouble. With a little seasoning, he'll be ready to move up. Hopefully by the time Grant runs off to pick up his first Michelin star. Her smirk showed she thought he had a while to go before that happened. Grant and I have an end-of-service meeting every night, and we decide on a special entree or two, but we never get to first courses. Too tired. You and I will do that in the morning. Ça va? Oui, chef. Her distant memories of high school French were going to have to sharpen. Any ideas? A few. I looked in the prep fridge this morning and pulled out things we can burn through. If we're careful, we have enough black truffles for a risotto. Good, Blake said, making a note. What else? Wild striped bass tartare? Good. Now, something without protein. Uh, some great sweet corn came in. How about a velouté? I like it, she said with a satisfied grin forming. Chilled, right? Right. She made another note. Which one do you want? To make? After placing her chin on her hand, she batted those gorgeous brown eyes. Yes, Emily. We have to make the food. I know, she said, her cheeks blazing. I, I meant, I don't know how you do things here. I'm sorry for teasing you, she said, and she honestly did look sorry. I can be a smart ass. I don't mind, really. So Grant and I split up the specials? All three of us do. I like to make at least one dish every day. Keeps me sharp. Emily wasn't sure exactly what Chef meant by saying she liked to make a dish. Did they each prep enough for service? Or make a single serving to test it out? She could have asked Grant, but thought it smarter to get her directions from the horse's mouth. How far do we go with the specials, that is? She shrugged. It depends. If you can make the whole thing, go ahead. But if it's something that has to be fired, the line cooks obviously handle that, so... She looked at her note. We'll make enough sea bass and velouté for... She leaned in and looked at her computer which she'd booted up the second she'd sat down. We're full tonight, so make enough for a hundred portions. But just one order of risotto, we make that to order. To order? Emily got out, stunned. You don't pre-cook the rice? Blake gave her a half smile. We do, but just before service. I don't like the texture when you cool it completely. She made a face. It can be chalky. Got it, she said the realization hitting her once again that Chef wasn't fucking around with quality. In eight years, Emily had never worked at a place where the risotto wasn't half-cooked in the morning, then spread out on cookie sheets to rest in a cooler for hours before service. If you don't have a preference, I'd like the velouté. Blake tapped her lip with her pencil. Tarragon? Perfect. And something to add a little crunch, I think. I'll play around and see what works. If I can't think of anything else, I'll make some croutons. Got it. I'll take the tartare. That leaves Grant with the risotto. She stood. Have your dish ready by 3.30. We present the specials to the FOH at 4. And I like to have time to tinker. Present the specials to the front of the house staff? The servers got a vote? Chef Henri would have laughed. Then a tendril of anxiety shot through her. What if the servers didn't like a dish? When they have to start over? Jesus. Shakily, she got up to move to the door, remembering to add, We, oui, chef. Blake stood as well and got close. When she spoke, her voice was soft, almost like they were peers, maybe even friends. It's very nice having someone to kick things around with. She clapped Emily on the shoulder with her smile growing. I can't tell you how nice it was not to have to think of today's specials. You just saved me ten minutes, which I truly appreciate. As Emily started for the door, Blake said, 
After my temper tantrum over the bathroom, I assume I don't have to give you the lecture about cleanliness. No, chef, she said, shaking her head soberly. Blake started to move back to her desk to sit down, then made a silly face and stayed right where she was. I can't help myself. That big A in the window means the health inspector whipped through here in minutes, happy as a clam. Keeping that grade is paramount. As she leaned over slightly, Emily was struck by the intensity that shone in her gaze. I know it's easy to forget this, but we're not just selling food. People trust us, Emily. They pay good money for the certainty that they're not going to get a stomach virus from something we've let sit in the cooler too long. Don't ever forget that. I won't, Chef. Great. Now get out there and kick some butt. Chef Special by Susan X. Marr Read by Anne Etter This has been an episode of Book Clips, a lesbian talk show podcast produced by The Lesbian Review. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please help others to find it by rating and subscribing on iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher. If you are an author interested in sending us a book clip, go to thelesbiantalkshow.com slash reading for more information.